Good morning, friends. I'm Reverend Carla Leitner, the Associate Minister at Unity San Diego. And uh, it's been a while since I've been on here to prayer. We have so many wonderful, wonderful volunteers that are praying with us each, with you each morning. Uh, but it is an honor and a privilege to be here today. I want to start this morning with a little bit of business. This morning, again, I'm looking on my phone to just clarify. This morning, about 6.59 in the morning, I received an email, uh, a person portraying again to be Reverend Edith. And, you know, this is just so, um, it's, it's just horrible that um, people are trying to come and really scam our church. I did not open it up. It came at 6.58 this morning. It said, Reverend Edith Sr., and I knew it wasn't her right off the bat. Blessings. Hi, how are you? I need an assist something. So it looks like it's someone act, asking for assistance. Of course, it was not her. We're going to be putting up things on the website as well. Um, but I want to let you know, friends and family, that we, anyone portraying to be Reverend Edith or anyone at Unity San Diego, we are not going to be asking you for assistance, for money, for gift cards, for anything. Please, if you get an email, just call our office. Let us know that you've received an email. But I, you know what? I would suggest you don't even open it. We've um, done a lot of measures to tighten our security at Unity San Diego. And um, the minute this the things come, these things happen, we jump on them and we do our best to make sure that everyone knows that we will never, ever send an email asking you to do anything like that. So now we're done with the housekeeping. So yeah, that's it. I need to take a breath after that. That was a little shock early this morning. Anyways, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what I'm doing. Uh, with my Everlasting Serenity group, we're beginning this this week. And also um, one of our congregants, Beth, um, really connected me with something I had forgotten about. And it's the six-day prayer process. You can actually find this in the book, uh, Teach Us to Pray, that was written by Charles and Cora Fillmore. And it is steps with denials and affirmations each day for six days a week. Monday through Saturday, and Sunday you rest. It's wonderful. Um, and for me, I find that whenever the outside world is flustering me or whenever I have um, so many concerns in my human error thinking, in my worry, in my, oh my God, what's going to happen, you know, takes over, I find that I need to go to the source, to the source of God, but also our source of unity. Our, our founders, Charles, our co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. I need to go back to those old school metaphysical teachings so I can remember exactly what I'm here to do. I'm here to teach metaphysics, which is beyond the physical, to look beyond what we see. And one of those big parts in something I think that sometimes is forgotten is denials. Now, most of you know I have a lot of kids. So if you don't know, I have seven kids and eight grandkids. So my oldest daughter is about 45, just going to turn 45. And my youngest daughter is eight. My grandkids range from about from 26 to 14 months. So I've diapered a lot of babies. So to me... The best way I can describe how affirmations without denials are is if you diaper a baby and the baby poops. And then you just keep putting a diaper over that poop diaper because, heck, you got, why clean it, right? It's just going to get dirty again. And you keep putting the diaper over and over and over and over. And pretty soon you have a bunch of dirty diapers. And you got to take them all off. You got to go to the basics. You got to wipe that rear end and put a clean one on. Now that's a parent, a parental uh, kind of a uh, story here. But to me, if we don't do denials and we don't get that poop out, we're just focusing these positive affirmations on top. 
on top, on top, on top. We're not really sinking it in and going deeper to remove that error thinking, remove those thoughts that no longer serve us. And to not give power to these worldly things, this lack and limitation that it's so easy for us to focus on. So I've printed up these, and if anyone wants them, they can contact me um, either on Facebook or through our email at church. Um, and I, I've started to do these with my family. And today is Saturday, and it starts with the denial. I deny that I inherit any belief that in any way limits me in health, virtue, intelligence, or power to do good. Those with whom I associate can no longer make me believe that I am a poor worm of the dust. The race belief that nature dominates man no longer holds me bondage, and I am now free from every belief that might in any way interfere with my perfect expression of health, wealth, peace, prosperity, and perfection in every department of life. I now, in the sight of Almighty God, unformulate and destroy by my all-powerful world word every foolish and ignorant assumption that might impede my march to perfection. My word is the measure of my power. I have spoken, and it shall be so. That's the denial. And in this, um, Charles Fillmore suggests that you do the do the denials. Um, not with so much force, that you do the denials with, and excuse me for looking at my notes, because I've just started this practice. He says, make your denials in a quiet, indifferent way. And your affirmations with a strong, bold, vehement, positive mind. Each day's treatment or the whole course, if necessary, is to repeat, be repeated over and over until it manifests its living presence and potency in our consciousness. Thank you, Julie. Good to see you. So the affirmation then is I am unlimited in my power and I have increasing health, strength, life, love, wisdom, boldness, freedom, charity, and meekness now and forever. Boy, Charles Fillmore sure affirmed a lot, right? But look what he did. Look how he started such a wonderful, powerful movement. He says, I am now in harmony with the father or mother. Actually, we know the God of our understanding and stronger than any mortal law. I know my birthright in pure being and I boldly assert my perfect freedom. In this knowledge, I'm enduring pure, peaceful. And I am enduring pure, peaceful and happy. I'm dignified and definite, yet meek and lowly in all that I think and do. I'm, I am one with, and I now fully manifest, vigorous life, wisdom, and spiritual understanding. I'm one with, and I now fully manifest love, charity, justice, kindness, and generosity. I am one with, and I now fully manifest infinite goodness and mercy. Peace flows like a river through my mind, and I thank thee, O God, that I am one with thee. I don't know about you, but recently and normally, I, my affirmation is like a one sentence or a two sentence, four or five key words. But when we think back to the roots of unity and we think back to those prayer circles and Myrtle Fillmore healing herself and the years that she spent in meditation and denials and affirmation, and we think about what is important to us. We really need to decide, I need to decide whether living in this fear and lack and what am I going to do about this and this problem and that problem and how am I going to deal with this and what am I going to say to this person, whether that's going to dominate the majority of my life or whether living in my spiritual self is going to dominate more of my life. Because friends, I believe that if I focus on my spiritual self, on the God of my understanding, if I deny that these things have power over me, not that they exist, because there are issues in our human world, but that they have the power to dictate my life, how I feel, how I live. 
how I believe. If I spend more time working on my inner self, then my outer self has to express in a more positive way. And so then I'm able to bring peace, love, joy, unity, justice to my world because I'm centered in who I am within. And I think that's a lot what this six-day prayer practice is about. It's a deep practice in the morning or the evening. Some people do it twice a day. Um, it's a deep practice to help us become centered. And lest we never forget that we do need to clear out what no longer serves us. We can put stuff on top, on top, on top. Sooner or later, we have to clear that stuff out. How much easier to clear it while we're doing an affirmation than something happened down the line and we have to go in and do super deep work of peeling layers of an onion that have grown and grown and grown because we've not dealt with it. So that's my word for today. And I'd like to take a moment to uh, meditate on denials and affirmations on letting go of the things that no longer serve us. There was a person that um, used to come to classes and she would say, whenever something didn't serve her, she would say, erase, erase, erase. And I thought that was a really great way of doing things, a great way of thinking about things. But we need friends to get into our spirituality. We need to get rid of what no longer serves us. And it's different for all of us. And we need to go within. Because that is how we will change the world. That is how we will change our lives. We're spiritual beings. And yes, we're living in a human world. But this world is a spiritual universe governed by, governed by spiritual laws. And so, who was it that says that you can't change this, change a problem by doing the same thing over and over, or you can't use the same tools to, to correct. You can't go to the, I'm, I'm losing my thought and I apologize, but it's, it, we can't fight a problem doing the same things we've always done. We need to do more. We need to go deeper. We need to become the change we wish to be. So let's take a moment. Let's take a moment to just focus on who we truly came here to be. Who are we in our spiritual sense? Let's set aside anything that we're holding in our hands, in our consciousness, and just take a moment to breathe. Knowing that there are issues, there are issues that happen in the world, in the news, maybe in our families and in our lives. But anything in our temporary human existence, anything that does not serve us, we can deny the power over them. We see things happening. We see things happening around the world, but how do they affect us? We can deny the power that they run our lives, that they dictate what we do that they change the way we treat people or treat others. We can deny that they change, that we allow others to have free will, just as the God of our understanding has allowed us to choose. We also can deny that aspect in us that wants to be judgmental, deny that it has any power over us, and affirm Affirm that we are perfect and whole, just the way we are. Affirm that each and every one of us is exactly where we need to be on our spiritual path. It's been said in unity that we accept everyone exactly where they are. And that means that we will have differing beliefs, differing views, differing different things that are important to us. But as we know, each and every one of us are on our own individual spiritual journey. And as the God of our understanding allows us 
the freedom of choice. We must allow others the freedom of choice as well. Because as the serenity prayer says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, which is everyone else's behavior, thoughts, feelings. The courage to change the things I can, which is my own thoughts, my own feelings, the way I react and the way I behave, and the wisdom to know the difference. We take this time in meditation to affirm, affirm the positivity in our lives, to affirm that we are so much more than what we see, what we look like who we are in this physical body and that we need and can only change from the inside out. And we can only work on ourselves. And as we become an example to others, based on our behavior in our inner work, we live in a higher metaphysical realm because we are going beyond the physical. We are working within. We are spreading that. What is just ours to do in positivity and in love. So let's take a moment now to listen for that small voice within. Knowing that we cannot change a problem with the circumstances that started the problem to begin with. That we must must go within and look for a higher guidance. Look within as Christ did and find our light in the silence. I am prosperous. I am whole. I am listening to that small voice within, which guides and directs me. And we are so thankful, Mother, Father, God, that we can go within. We can listen to the truth of our being, to what we really need to hear, that we can choose to turn off that TV, to turn the news off to stop focusing on lack and limitation, to go within and to deny that these things have power to regulate our life and to affirm the truth, the love, the prosperity that we choose to be by focusing on that which we choose the universe to bring into our expression. And as the spirit guides us and directs us into what is ours to do, we will listen and we will, in our own unique ways, express the God of our understanding into our lives. And we say, thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. I invite you, friends, to open your eyes as you feel ready. And just take the time today to go in the silence. Take some time. Know that we can, there's a bigger picture to everything that we see. There is deeper expression. There's a bigger picture. There is much more. We are much more than what we see each and every day. We are much more than the challenges that everyone faces. And if we face, we look at what we choose to be and we it's like the domino effect. If we all choose to be something better and we look for that, 
There will be more, friends. There will. It works. Thank you so much for allowing me to spend this morning with you. Please have a wonderful Saturday. Blessings. Namaste.